I find it odd that we see the same group of people, and it is a group of people that did not even finish the freaking game are now playing the DLC to review it and to review Bomb It. Three bit, let's get your hot take on what's going on with this uh, DLC. Yeah, so, I mean, it, it kind of comes from a place of, like, where, where I kind of stand with a lot of reviews in, in general. Um, we just kind of reached this timeline where uh, objectivity is kind of punished, which is why I can vibe with a lot of mainstream kind of reviews out there. I've seen reviews punish Starfield for um, not being like this game, or it feels too much like a Bethesda game, or it's like, oh, it's it's uh, it doesn't feel like No Man's Sky, you know, punishing a Bethesda game for essentially being a Bethesda game. Um, yeah, and it's fine if you don't like a game. I feel like people can can get that mixed up. Like, I, I there's plenty of people out there. I'm sure, like, oh, I, I I prefer how Skyrim did it, or or maybe I like Morrowind or or some of their older games. That's that's completely fine. But to basically have these some of these people um, having articles where it's just like, oh, um, it's been a month later and i already forgotten about starfield while while you're writing about starfield it just comes off as grifting because you know that a lot of people are looking looking at the game um you, you you have the same content creators who have have like 12 15 videos on on how bad the game is and it just comes off as like uh because i've seen comments basically saying like oh but these people are reviewers. This is what they're supposed to do and, and, and things like that. It just comes off as kind of disingenuous, um, in my opinion. And um, me and, and Matt was actually talking about this the other night where we were talking about like objectivity in, in gaming media where, um, for example, a game like Hogwarts uh, was basically just shunned from the Game Awards because of how people felt about the author. So it no longer becomes anything about the game anymore. The game's quality, uh, how you you, you uh, actually uh, like the game's graphics, the, the the sound design, all that gets thrown out the window in multiple occasions for several games. We've seen like a game like Modern Warfare uh, be rated on the same level as Gollum. You know, um, obviously, production-wise, Modern Warfare Three is is nowhere comparable to a game like Gollum. So right. my my problem gets uh, to be with the gaming media side where it's more about how the game makes you feel, uh, less less than what's actually in the game and what's actually the production quality of the game. So I, I feel like back in the day uh, with your game spots, your, your older art game articles, there was a time I, I felt uh, where a lot of gaming media did at least focus on how good is the sound quality, how good is the graphics, how good is the fun factor, like these different um, pieces that kind of formulate a review but now it, it's like either a game is a seven out of ten or it's like a four and um and <laughs> it, and it's these this sort of in between is, is kind of law so the grifting culture is kind of what i was really commenting on like you, you cannot like the game if you have a, a problem like hargeet like that's a friggin valid response right like he can't play the game Right. zero <laughs> you know that 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 totally makes sense like uh that is your experience like he's he tried to boot the game doesn't work therefore i'm going to punish said game you know um but you have people out there who like let's say they don't like a racing game they review a racing game and then be like oh like oh i didn't you know i, I don't like this racing game i'm gonna give it like a i don't like that you had to turn left so many times yeah yeah just Zero. like dumb things like that that i keep seeing uh people <laughs> who don't like rpgs review rpgs and that's kind of the the thing i usually tackle whenever i talk about things in you know, on twitter or or in different podcasts it's never about the you not liking the game it's more so like uh the the kind of like um, being disingenuous about your overall experience towards the game. Like if you're if you're gonna punish a game um, like Modern Warfare Three, um, like I, I, I'm referencing this because I just thought it was really interesting. Where uh, that game, um, the things around Modern Warfare Three, like you could not like the game, um, but if you're gonna say that 
that triple a game the hundreds of people worked on it that it's somehow a a lesser experience to to something like an indie game like a golem experience is just is just very interesting to me but yeah, yeah I, I mean it, it goes into a lot of different uh forms of conversation or how i feel about it um overall i like starfield i think it's a, a great game i enjoy it uh i play a little bit of the dlc uh so far i'm, I'm kind of the way I play these types of games is I uh, I take a long time because I'm like, oh, what's this over there? And then yeah, before you know it, how I play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it takes me a while to to beat uh, these types of games. Um, I don't think about that as a game is 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 really. Uh, it's not one of those games that plays really well when you rush it to begin with. Um, but yeah, I mean, overall, that's that's just how I feel with all the people around the internet they're saying like uh, that's kind of trashing um the game and if they have uh previous uh videos talking about how trash it is and why you shouldn't buy it um i've i've seen i've literally seen people who said like why they hate this game and how trash it is the same people say like why they don't like the dlc i'm like oh surprise like if you don't yeah. like the first mm -hmm. one what makes you think you're all of a sudden gonna like oh the the DLC is a ten out of ten so that's that's where it comes from uh, that's where my point of view essentially comes from it, it's just uh, if you like those type of games uh, cool you probably like Starfield if you don't then you know it doesn't make sense to uh, put further a spotlight on something like it can I speak to what um, Three Bit was talking about sure it, sure it's it's I was having this conversation. Uh, with friend of the channel Lucius Augustus uh, earlier today in 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 a in a DM, and I think that the issue with with Bethesda these days, like, listen, let's just all be honest. Hating on Starfield is big business, I, right? I literally said that before you yeah, got here. Yeah, no. yeah, your game is is not getting the right amount of eyeballs it needs. Compare it to Starfield, right? Your website needs a little bit more traffic. Talk about how bad Starfield is. That's one part of it, right? I will not deny that. But I think another thing is, for the people that are being genuine about liking or not liking the game, I think the issue that I'm seeing is, and I've noticed this since Starfield came out, a lot of people are judging Starfield specifically. It's basically like Starfield is fighting ghosts. Right. So they're saying, well, I know how I felt when I played Skyrim for the first time. I know how I felt when I played Fallout 4. I don't feel that way when I play this, but they're not really looking at the game for what it actually is. They're looking at it for the feeling that they had a decade ago. Right. And you may be a different person today and think it's it's not as easy to give you that same feeling. It's not as, um, it's not, uh, basically no matter what they do, you may never feel feel that way or have that sense of, of joy again. So um, for me, and I do this all the time with films, because back when like the, the MCU was at, in its height and there was all this speculation and and mav i know you know about this mm. uh there was all this speculation about what was going to be in the next mcu movie and then when that rumor didn't happen in the movie people would walk away upset and i would always say you have to judge the product based on what you got not based on what, what you, you were, were hoping it to be yeah. right so and and i see this over and over again it didn't feel like this it, it it doesn't it needs to feel like what it is and if you can judge it based on that and then if you come to a conclusion of i like it or i don't like it great but i don't think we should try to say well it's not like no man's sky or it's not like this right and you know i again pepperidge farm always remembers <laughs> um remember when we first saw star wars outlaws and everyone said, this is how you do an open world uh, space uh, yeah, of a game I, and how that I, turned out, yep. right? So I, 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 I think the comparisons of other games or wanting to chase a certain feeling that you had as a, as a teenager or in your formative years, I don't think that's the, way to, the right way to go about these things. I think we have to judge them 
based on what we are, what they are and not what we wanted them to be. I don't know if that makes sense. Mav, let's get your hot take on this. Yeah, so I've been playing it. I've been playing on PC mainly. Um, I, I'm i not super far into it because I'm like 3-Bit and you. I kind of slow play these things. I, yep. Um, I know everybody can play your games differently how you want to, but for me, it's kind of almost how these games are meant to be played. Um, if I rush through the story on this, I'm not really experiencing what a Bethesda game is to me, right? Or any of the special things about it. Instead, I'm just kind of going through the systematic processes of the uh, story and then then that's it. And you can judge it for that. And if that's all you're looking for and you want to judge it for what that is, and that's fine, right? But for me, I when I play a Bethesda game or I play a game like Starfield, I'm looking for all the things that make that game special or like that game what it is why is this game so ambitious what are all the things that they're doing that is different from everything else what makes it unique and that's that's what i'm looking for with that and that's what i'm looking for with shattered space that it adds to starfield right and i think that so far i've been uh really happy with what i've seen it's gorgeous uh, i'm liking where the story's going um and i'm just going to kind of explore and take it all in man but uh it's been great so far as far as the a critique and criticism man it's not a surprise like uh like everborn laid out perfectly three bit was talking about reviews perfectly uh way more eloquently than i usually go because i usually go on tirades however uh hating on starfield is big business and you saw this with the lead up actually to shattered space right you saw this with the lead up to it because you already had these articles basically setting this up you had Paul Tassie's article uh, saying, as a matter of fact, into the headline saying, uh, Shattered Space will determine how much Bethesda will support Starfield going forward. And then completely contradicts himself in the entire article saying, you know, this could actually have some implications. Maybe, maybe not. But Todd Howard said they're going to keep supporting it for 10 years. Right. And they already have other uh, expansions planned. So it's like, well, but in your headline, you said that this will determine how much they support Starfield. You mean to tell me the company that resurrected Fallout 76 is going to give up on the most successful launch Bethesda game of all time? Really? Where Are we actually going there? I don't think so. Uh, then you have other articles uh, saying like, oh, will this game save Starfield? Yeah, save that, yeah was, that, that was the Being one I was holding in my back pocket. Success? Being a financial success, being a critical hit, having tons of players that love and play the game. Oh, we need to save this game from all of that horribleness. No, we need to save it from idiotic takes on the internet from the people that just don't like the game, but just for months and months and months just won't shut up about it. Hey, it's cool if you don't like it. That's fine. I understand you're getting attention because of it, right? So that's fine, right? If you don't like something so much, why spend so much energy talking about it all the time? It is so strange to me. Like, if that's what you want to, man, I just imagine seeing a show that you just didn't like once, right? I'm like, you know, I'm going to talk about how much I hated this TV show for six months. Oh, you know what? Actually, a year. Oh, my God. There's another episode coming out. I'm going to make sure I make everybody know how I feel about that. Oh, it's just so weird, man. It's just weird energy. To be fair, Mav, that happens <laughs> all the time. It does. <laughs> I don't understand it. I don't understand it. You know, you know it. what? Paul, you know what? Starfield needs it needs an Emmy nominated TV show, and then everyone will realize they'll like it. But but we know what the the truth of the matter is. The moment this gets announced for PlayStation, everybody's going to find their love for it. Of course yeah, they, they are. Of course know it. They I know are. it. Listen, think about Sea of Thieves right 35 <laughs> million players on its own and nobody 40. realizes 40 million sorry excuse me and no one realizes it's the cat's pajamas until <laughs> it's going to playstation oh and, and it finally <laughs> clicks with me man it's got haptic feedback now holy right? crap and, we and, feel and then the shadows space. the shadows are going to be better on the <laughs> ps5 pro and then everybody's going to lose their mind <laughs> this is what's going to happen. So the they need a TV show and they need to announce it for PlayStation and everyone <laughs> will fall in love with it again. But on a serious yeah. note, I think a, another part <laughs> of the issue, right? Uh, jokes aside, another part of the issue is people that either have an issue with either Microsoft or some people don't have an issue with Microsoft. They have an issue with Bethesda, right? When you walk into a game or anything and you walk in with a chip on your shoulder that says, 
you this thing needs to fix all of my ailments with this organization, right? So all of the, yeah. the bad press that either Bethesda or Microsoft has, if you walk into the game and say, if this thing doesn't change my mind on all of that, then it's a disappointment and a failure. And I just, again, come back to don't like the game, but don't like it for what it is it's doing not saying you have to walk in there and it has to change your mind about a way you already felt but, right? and, and it but feels like there's a lot of that going on uh, you remember when uh like destin Legary, like uh, and oh, i'm when i'm saying names i'm not trying to ultimately criticize these people no, no, i'm no, just no, i'm just saying fine. i'm that's just fine. using examples right like paul yeah. Tally, like paul tassi's stupid article um like destin Legary when he kept comparing this game starfield to no man's sky right and then he was like why does everybody keep getting upset that I keep mentioning that this is like No Man's Sky, right? And uh, we're like, because it's not like No Man's Sky. And you're misleading people to, into thinking it's the kind of game that it's not. And guess what? A lot of people, when Starfield came out, was like, man, I really wish this uh, you know, whole uh, thing it was more like No Man's Sky. Well, like, okay, it was because you've all been thinking this thing. But literally during the Dev Direct, that last 45 minute dev direct, they literally broke down how all the systems were going to work in Starfield. Like they showcased everything, right? And yeah. people just choose whether or not to pay attention to that. Instead, they have a perception of the feeling or the kind of game because it's a space game that they were thinking it was going to be, right? And you're, you hit the nail on the head, Everborn, about judging things for what they are and not what they're not, right? And that's something that we've like a lot of us have lost the plot on another game for that happened to was suicide squad, right? Yeah. Uh, suicide squad. Uh, we all were kind of disappointed when that was announced that they're making suicide squad and what it was. when We finally saw the gameplay and it's like, Oh, but we really want rock steady to, to make another Batman game. Right. But we can't let that actually affect our enjoyment or our perception of the game when we're playing it because it is still a high quality game with great production values. It has a great, really good story. It's really fun. It has good gunplay. But yet it doesn't get credit for any of those things. Instead, it only is thought of as, hey, it's not Batman. Right? And yeah. that that kills the game. It, it kills the momentum. Everybody's like, we're sick of these kind of games. But they're only sick of them when they talk about Suicide Squad. <laughs> When other games come out for other franchises or new IPs that are uh, games of service games or, or anything like that, it's like, hey, this yeah. is awesome. I'm really you, having fun playing this game. You had articles you know? that say, like, why uh, looter shooters are a problem. Uh, yeah, or you literally had IGN yeah. say that uh, IGN, hopefully yeah. Suicide Squad will kill this genre, right? Yeah. Yeah. But then later actually championing other games in the From similar genre. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, and, like, Concord even. Like, I mean, so, like... It is just strange how you people will pick and choose what things to hate on and what things to champion based on just the own personal preference of the time. And that happens a lot. And Starfield has gotten the back end of that, like where it's on the opposite side, where it's more popular to hate on it. Uh, but it hasn't actually really um, affected the game as much negatively as people would think. It was still the biggest launch in uh, Zenimax Bethesda's history. Uh, the game sold crazy well it had uh extreme amount of game pass subscribers i remember that uh they also talked about it had the most new game pass subscriptions uh for game for a xbox when that game launched and it still has a lot of people playing today would they like more positive reception out there i'm sure they would but ultimately i don't think that it is going to affect too much you have some positivity out there for the people that are playing it because they like starfield right and then you have the negativity out there for the people that are just uh, not into it and that's fine, you know, but there are some of the, you know, there's the big business of hating on Starfield also.